Hello my friends and welcome to this video where me and RJTV are gonna go through the text guides for the upcoming Easter Lynx tournament starts the 26th of March which is tomorrow Monday. Before we start please do not forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, we are 144 people away from 13,000 which is an absolutely amazing uh, number. So also do not forget to check out patreon.com slash golf clash Tommy where you can buy specific packages to improve your game and be getting that banner for the tournament so i think it's time to say hello to you rj glad to have you on board for this uh, walkthrough tonight oh nothing better than making a video with tommy uh, glad to be here it's a pleasure and i'm looking really forward to this awesome so i think we just kick off directly with hole number one it's an old hole uh, and I say old hole because we're going to play some new holes as well this time around. So it's a part four. And how do you play this one, RJ? Well, if I'm not really that um, confident in my accuracy, I definitely follow the black line and go to the right of the sand trap because you can easily go ahead and uh, hit the green on two. Uh, however, if you do feel that you can accurately land over in between the uh, left side of the sand trap and the rough, that gives you a direct shot to where you could possibly chip in. And then there's this there's this blue line that uh, I think Tommy's got something special for us on that one. Yeah, I uh, it's very special and you can see it's a very weird line, but that is actually a line if you are going to hook your shot to the green, uh, also called a trick shot. So uh, that most applies when you play from the second tee, which is pro and expert division. But we need to have tailwind or tailwind slash sidewind to the left to be able to do that shot. With all other type of wind, don't try it out because it's way too hard. But if you're going to try that one, you aim just at the rough there, having your adjustment just at the rough and go for uh, the full curl that you have on your phone. Not a tablet curl, a phone curl. But otherwise, with any other type of wind, like side wind, head wind, then we play up short and play it easy, like white line or black line. But tail wind, we try to hook it or we try to go with curl and go as close to the green as possible for an easy shipping for an eagle. Easy and easy, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so hole number right. two, first par three, old hole as well. And how do we how do we play this one, RJ? Once again, this is a very straightforward hole. Uh, a lot of people are going to be getting super close, so I definitely recommend the backbone. And I also recommend uh, pushing your backbone up almost to maximum distance and putting a lot of backspin on it, so your ball will not be rolling down that hill or too far past the hole, and this is definitely uh, something you could ace. Agree, totally agree. If we take pro and expert and masters into account, uh, you most likely will be playing uh, from second tee with a wood club. If we do have tailwind, we will be playing with a long iron, depending on what type of ball you're playing with. I do suggest a guardian there to use the backspin, aim just uh, like before the, like, after the pin to let it fall back down they have done some changes with the green which means that the green is not sloping as much as usually from the right side to the left so you can actually be short to the hole on the right side even if you go on the right side so that is actually new for this tournament and for this hole from masters you will most likely be playing with your wood club as well with max distance with a lot of headwind we will be playing with uh, with our driver then it's a quarterback or a rocket for uh, this hole but in the end straightforward use a club with backspin and go get that ace okay hit hole. the ace <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> hole number three old hole again and uh, we have a par five first par five and how do we play this one you know again i'm the conservative guy uh so uh you know and when it comes to playing this hole conservatively I like to bounce it where and on the guides you see that first square and I put full top spin on because that extends the range of your second bounce to ensure you don't clip the rough or go into the sand. Let the ball roll up and then you should easily have a, your second shot go right onto the green. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> now it's uh, when it comes to this hole, it's um, I remember this one for the last one, we, last tournament we had this one. 
and uh, you could actually put yourself up for an like a uh, wedge club for the albatross but that means that you need to have tailwind so if you follow the black line you will see that that is meant to have tailwind if we have tailwind we will be able to reach over the bunker and curling it into the right side putting ourselves up for a short iron slash a wedge for the pin for an albatross otherwise i completely uh, go with the white line and you can see on the club selections there you can see the big dog you can see the cataclysm uh, with distance and that is if you bounce it over the bunker with like just a couple of bars of topspin Then you need some distance for the second shot to the green So Okay, then we go now we're going to scroll down uh, we have it in not the right order here So we're going to scroll down to hole number four a new hole. So this will be interesting So how do you play this one RJ? Well, this is a very tricky hole. This is one that is not so straightforward, in my opinion. And that is because the terrain right in front of the hole is very hilly. It reminds me of another hole, which I can't remember what uh, what set it was on. But anyway, there is a small little patch of fairway right where you have that white box. And right there is a pretty flat surface. So I would uh, aim for that spot, put a little bit of curl or side spin on, and uh, go for your race, but definitely get on the green in uh, in one shot. Well, obviously with all par threes, but my main thing is that use that little patch of fairway. I don't like going straight because it's a lot of little hills. Totally agree here as well. Uh, this hole is um, is to trick you a little bit, and uh, of course with an open fairway that we have between the bunkers, it's it's absolutely a way to go if you if you want to play it with a less sh shot for uh, a less chance for making an hole in one but you may want to have a safe birdie then that is the place to go you will may find yourself with a long putt or maybe for a, with a wedge to the pin uh, from that position uh, but otherwise if you're going to uh, have an easier way to make an hole in one then is to go on the right side on the fairway patch there uh, it's it's not that big but in the end uh, if we want to have the hole in one or at least go for it that that's the way to play Okay, oh now I'm going to scroll back. So we're going to go to hole number five a new hole uh, again It's a part five interesting many lines here on the screen, but how do we play this one RJ? Get out your dusting material. It's time to take out the big topper <laughs> What we're gonna do <laughs> is we're gonna put a lot of topspin on this and we are going to land the ball right where you see that first uh, black square on the fairway. And you're going to wanna to end up somewhere by that black star because you wanna be able to use this fairway um, the, in the third fairway that'll somewhat lead you towards the ball. Be careful not to end up in the rough on this one, but the big topper and the big dog paired together sound really good to me on hole five. What do you think, Tommy? I agree, definitely. A big topper is not that often we use, so it will be uh, fun to see people actually using it. If we take uh, and play from the second uh, uh, second tee or the third tee, like Pro Expert or Moses, you of course should be playing with an Apocalypse or a Thor's Hammer or something like that. It all comes down to the wind here. If we do get headwind or uh, or like headwind slash sidewind, then we can't reach over. It will be very, very tough. Uh, but I rather than see you play up safe and then you go with the wood club that gives you the most top spin uh, possible and the distance together. Uh, if we can reach over to the second fairway on the right uh, in one, that is a big, big plus and will leave us with an easy approach to the green. If we can make an eagle here, then it's, uh, then it's absolutely po uh, a plus. Uh, but there will be people making a birdie here because if we can't reach over the rough for the first uh, shot Then we will not be able to reach for the green in two That is important to have in mind. So my friends uh, that was hole number five and then we come to hole number six This is a loss of the old holes that we're going to play here uh, and a par four So how do we play this one? This one was never very fun for me. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's, it's a very dangerous hole. The main, uh, the main thing I like to do as a rookie is just make sure that I somehow get past that tree line uh, in between the two sand traps. And the best way I find to do that is to take the black track, the black line, and put some topspin on that ball 
and hopefully you can get it close enough for a chip in on your second shot. However, another thing that I tried to do, and it works about 75% of the time, which isn't very high, is I just go full bore, full pull the pull the ball all the way back and just try to blast through the middle. And as long as you avoid that first sand trap, I've actually had my ball hit a tree. And because I had full top spin on, it went against physics and still rolled forward after bouncing back and got me stuck in that sand trap, making it so I could still get on the green in two. Uh, but again, the main thing you want to do is make sure you don't land behind any trees, whether it's the stripe going across or the stripe on the side to the left. And uh, that's how I play that hole. Always have. That was very interesting to hear, actually. I've heard uh, more people saying that they go full blast going through the trees with a lot of topspin on their clubs. Uh, and that's why uh, you can see like all the lines kind of goes there with the trees. They have made a change here on this hole as well that they have removed some of the trees in the middle, which uh, gives you more space to bounce it, just, bounce it just in the middle. Stay away from the bunker just in front. That is the key in that, uh, in that way. Otherwise, I do the same second or third tee. Try to go past the trees on right or the left side to give yourself an open shot with your short iron or with your wedge. And the thing that you need to have in mind for your second shot is that you're playing uphill, which means that your ball will be less affected by the wind than normal. So if you have 10 in wind, for an example, then you adjust for 7. So it's... Um, a big big difference there and with uh, some good wind uh, and I remember the last time we had this one in a tournament we had wind that was tailwind, uh, tailwind combined with sidewind to the right which gave us a straight way to the pin with straight tailwind which gave us a lot of eagles. They have changed the green as well so it's more bumpy than before and definitely have in mind don't go short on green then you will actually not be able to putt yourself up to the pin. You will actually be falling back down and that could potentially give you a bogey or a par uh, depending on what your opponent is scoring. So don't put yourself into that really, really tough position. So many words about hole number six and we're going to go and see here for hole number seven. Now we're going to go up again. We have hole number seven here. Uh, and this is the last part three. Interesting one. And how do we play this one, RJ? Uh, personally, I, I like the Viper on this one for rookies. Uh, but there is one thing you need to be very careful of, and that is there is the elevation difference between where your ball is going to take its first bounce and the green on top. Uh, so make sure that you uh, you know make your adjustments depending on wind, of course, and everything. I believe it would be about two bars of backspin, but you definitely want to make sure that you don't go sailing, but you also don't want to roll back down that hill. Yeah, and I think you meant two bars of backspin means for pro and expert or master. For rookie, when you play with your wood club, you need topspin. So two or three bars of topspin to get you up to, to, to the green. Otherwise, two bars of backspin is totally correct when we play with our drivers uh, on pro and expert or masters. Because that is, uh, you will be hitting the fairway there, and it's uphill, way, way uphill of a fairway, uh, would give you a different bounce with a wood club. Uh, or I would say like this, you will hit the fairway in a different way with your wood club uh, or wood shot than you will with your driver. So two bars of backspin with your driver, three, uh, two to three bars of topspin with your wood club there. But again, elevation changes, and as the game works, when we play over water, uh, then the ball is affected more by the wind than normally. So this will be a very, very tough hole because if you go short, you will fall back down almost to the bunker and then you will be like 50 to 60 yards from the pin. So, hard. And yes, absolutely. I'm sorry, absolutely. Two two bars of top spin, not back spin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for the error there. Yeah, no, I just no, I get no carried worries. away. <laughs> yeah, no worries. We talked about that before as well, so I know you meant it the wrong, uh, the, the right way. So hole number eight, my friends, it's a short part four. So can we reach the green here, maybe? Well, I I really like the the white line. I'm more of a uh, you know once again a conservative player. I like avoiding jumping cliffs and everything. And you know it looks kind of dangerous over there to the left. If you are a rookie, um, you know I, I definitely recommend going to the right with some topspin. Be careful if you have too much uh, 
uh, wind at your back because you could definitely roll into the sand up ahead. So adjust your shot accordingly. And then if you use a club that has a lot of backspin, uh, you should safely be able to land on the green. Correctamente, or uh, how I should say. Uh, the black line, it's an aggressive line. And uh, it only applies if we are having tailwind. Uh, not, not, uh, no other ways. It's, uh, first of all, it's a very tough shot to get to the green in one, even with tailwind, because you need to bounce it on the first fairway and you need to then get the second bounce on the other fairway to bounce over like you bounce over two bunkers in one shot when you need to hit the rough after the second bunker to make it roll onto the green and you can just hear on me explaining that that it's very very hard as you can see on one of the on the tutorial for hole 8 for pro and expert then you will see me doing it but in the end, you will most likely be ending up into the rough or into the bunker close to the uh, close to the pin by going that distance or that uh, that direction. Uh, the green is small, very small. So that's why you can see here on the text guide you have Machete, Torn, Thorn, Saturn, and then Houdini as well as a bunker club or sandwich club because the green is uh, small, which means that if you're having other clubs with not that much backspin, then you will not be able to go for the pin. And of course, if you put yourself up in a situation where you ha are in a bunker or in the rough, you want to go for the shot at the pin, not just play safe on the green to make a birdie. That's not wa uh, that's not a good way to play this par four. So uh, my friends, we have one more hole left. We have hole number nine. It's a par five. And uh, you can see here directly on the screen that it's a hard one. But uh, my question for you, RJ, of course, is how do we play this one? Ah, this, this is a definitely a deceiving hole because a, a lot of people will think that they were going to want to go to that right portion of the fairway. And that really just sets up a very difficult second shot to get you on the green in a putt distance. So what you want to do is you want to land somewhere around that bunker area on the fairway and put some curl or ball spin, or, or both, but don't overdo it. And try to land as close to the rough at the top as you can, setting you up for an excellent big dog shot to possibly get you on the green in two. What do you say? I of agree. course, with, with a little bit of wind at your back. <laughs> yeah, correct. And also uh, with, with top spin as well. But the big dog is an excellent suggestion for that si type of situation. And most, uh, most likely we will be playing it like that, putting it up short and then have to really, really play our second shot well to get to the green in two. Uh, the white line, the little bit more aggressive line, only applies again if we are having some kind of tailwind. Uh, the tailwind will give us the possibility to bounce over to the fairway patch in between all the bunker, yeah, bunker, yeah, stuff there. <laughs> so you only need to use one bar of topspin while bouncing over, rather hit the rough, on that fairway patch rolling onto the uh, to the fairway then rolling over the fairway patch into the bunker because if you're using three four five bars of top spin you will be rolling off from that fairway patch and will have a very very tough time to reach for the green in two the fairway is very small or thin i would say uh, for going with our second shot and it can uh, in some cases put you into the bunkers because the bounce will be very irregular, especially if we had wind from left to right. So if you can go over to the second fairway patch, then you can use whatever wood club you want and it will be easier. Otherwise, put yourself up short. So, okay then. <sighs> A lot of talk, <laughs> but it's awesome to go through this with you, RJ. And I can't wait for the tournament tomorrow. Do you have any, uh, any estimations on uh, like a target score for uh, for the tournament what do you think about that uh, uh honestly <laughs> if you want to improve your score i will tell you this either go to my channel or go to tommy's channel and check out check out our guides on the wind <laughs> because i think that that could definitely play a role especially looking at this final hole for how thin the fairways are uh wow for rookie i don't know i'm thinking um Probably minus 20 would be a good goal to shoot for because the wind shouldn't be all that bad. 
But uh, as far as pro and expert, I'm going to leave that up to you because you're the expert. <laughs> yeah, and that is tough. I don't know why I put that question out there because I have uh, such a hard time myself as well to answer that question. It, <laughs> and it comes down to the wind. Uh, it does. And if we do uh, put uh, find ourselves with Tailwind on the par fives, then or like side slash Tailwind, we will be able to eagle all three of them. And that will, of course, put the scores up and puts us in a way of a minus 25 to a minus 28, 29, minus 30 in the weekend round. Yeah, because all uh, like people will find specific ways to play the hole. And then we have hole number one and we have hole number eight, which is short par fours. And if we get tailwinds there, then we will be able to at least be close to the green. Or go for the green, and those then that is a possibility as well. So it will be interesting to see the wind, and for the first time, it will actually be some changes with the wind. That the wind that we will have in masters will not be the same in expert, and it will not be the same in pro, and it will not be the same in rookie. So it will be way way harder to, especially if you play uh, more accounts than one in separate levels. So uh, that will be fun and very interesting. So oh, can I can I add one more thing? I'm sorry, just Absolutely. real quick. Uh, get well soon, Lisa. We're all praying for you. <laughs> awesome, uh, RJ. Thanks for this, and uh, my friends, check out RJ's channel. It's RJ TV here on YouTube, uh, and may give him some love. Hit the subscribe button there as well. And uh, if you want to get in contact with any of us, we are at our channels, and you can also find us on Facebook. So my friends, I will leave it with this, and uh, I think we have learned now, RJ, how to end it here on on the channel, right? So how do we end it here for the peeps? I would say happy stroking. <laughs> happy stroking, guys.